Welcome back to part 2 of your regularly scheduled program of turning your 2D character into 3D. As it says in the title, I'm going to turn one of your 2D original characters into 3D. Many of you sent me your works via DMs on Instagram and Twitter quite a while ago, but I decided to reach out to you guys on Discord just to see what sticks. And although there weren't a lot of submissions, this artwork caught my attention. Now, before I continue, submissions are now closed, so you don't need to send me any more of your works. So, today's submission is from Derpine. Meet Eska, a 12-year-old angler fish boy. Homeless, he rides around in box cars that travel the world with his axolotl raccoon named Bandit. Eska is about 5 feet tall, he wears a brown coat with patches, green beanie and has blue skin with a thin translucent layer around it. He carries his things in a bindle. So I began doing some research completely clueless of what a boxcar actually is. I know it's a little ironic considering that I was doing my research. So naturally I assumed that it was a car made out of a cardboard box. Yeah, I even did a whole sketch on my iPad in Procreate and blocked out an entire scene in Blender thinking wow I deserve an award for my brilliant interpretation. With my back f***ing hurting from petting it so hard, I sent Derpine a work in progress, also because I had a question. Here's a work in progress. By the way, did you envision Bandit to have skin like an axolotl or be furry like a raccoon? I imagined it like an axolotl. When I said box cars, I meant jumping on the train cars, but this little car is really cute. Like these. I don't feel the need to redo anything, I just wanted to show you what I had in mind. Oh. Also, Durpine then gave me a little more information about Eska's backstory, saying that he hops on random trains, traveling from town to town, running from the law and looking for his long lost parents. So I scraped the entire scene and went back to the drawing board because I thought it was such a great story I didn't want to disregard the original boxcar idea. So this gave me the idea of placing a map in the middle of the scene for both characters to focus on. I drew the background to be a little ambiguous, but I knew that I wanted to include this idea of having bundles of kelp being the ocean equivalent of hay bales. Now, in Blender, I started by blocking out Eska, starting with a sphere, a grab brush, and a symmetry mode turned on. But like I said, I scraped the first idea, so let me just quickly walk you through what I did just to catch you up to speed. I'm using the grab brush tool to capture the shape and forms of the character, and I'm trying to keep the poly count low, that way it's easier to manipulate the mesh. I place the eyes using the tiny eye add-on that you can get for free on my gum road, then anytime I find myself running out of polygons to sculpt with, I'll just do a quick remesh, but then of course you don't want to go too crazy with the density. Then I blocked out the cardboard car with primitive shapes and kept things simple. Obviously, I ended up scraping it, but this is essentially what I do with all my works. Avoid details and don't get too attached. Now, as for the rest of Asuka, I simply duplicated his head, smoothed it out, and turned it into his beanie arms, clothes, etc. And the process for Bandit is pretty much the same. Once I was done with blocking out the characters and some of the key objects, I immediately assigned them with their base colors. Nothing too fancy, again, keeping things simple. I used the add cube function, which allows you to quickly place cubes on a flat surface to block out the rest of the scene. To speed up my workflow a little, I put together this add-on that allows me to quickly change the pivot point of an object. Now that you're all up to speed, I have a question for you. Have you ever thought of what would happen if you stopped eating for a few days or even weeks? Weeks? Yes, you'll die. Which is why I would like to thank my wonderful patrons for their support. On my Patreon, you'll gain early access to the videos like the one you're watching right now, and early access to presets of the Tiny Eye collection, and even some of the project files of my works. Thank you so much once again to the patrons for your support. You can check out the other benefits at patreon.com slash tinynaki. Alright, now I'm gonna duplicate Eska's head that I did earlier, and then I'm just gonna smooth it out and use the grab brush tool to change his expression. Then let's use the lasso mask and draw brush for precise adjustments. Sometimes I'll turn on dynamic topology if I want to retain the details but require more faces at a specific region. For the rest of the blockout stage, again, I'm going to duplicate the existing meshes and turn them into whatever I need them to be. I found it really helpful to sculpt the limbs in separate blobs of meshes, so the thighs, shins, feet, and even the toes that are bent. Also, let's not forget to check our sculpt in multiple angles since we're sculpting in 3D. For the map, I want to achieve a slightly worn appearance while maintaining a clear shape language. I'm not going to add too many vertices, just enough to create a tasteful deformation. With the main subjects and the walls of the box car blocked out, I'm going to quickly set up the camera. First create a bezier circle, then scale it up, then create a camera and go to object constraint, and select follow path. Select the circle as target and it should stick nicely along the curve. Create an empty and increase the size. 
select the camera and under object constrain add a track to and set the empty as target. Now you can move the empty and direct your camera to point towards your subject. Now all we gotta do is set the keyframes on the offset and make sure to copy the first keyframe over to the last frame, that way it loops. Now let's block out the environment starting with some stacks of kelp. Let's throw in some barrels. And some planks. I'm going to temporarily draw in the raccoon eye pattern with the sculpt paint brush just to make sure that the proportions are correct. Now all there's left to do is to refine everything that we've created and add some additional details. For the folds, I'm going to use a mix of the draw shop brush and the crease brush. Let's duplicate the toe proxies and turn it into actual toes. Then let's smooth out the joint meshes. Speaking of joint meshes, one way I like to do that is by creating a boolean to unify two meshes. Then with dynamic topology turned on and the strength of the clay brush turned on to zero, brush over the area that needs to be joined, then smooth it out. Now I'm going to duplicate this plank and use it for the ground and walls. Let's apply an array modifier, then duplicate the plank in edit mode, then offset it by half. Then adjust the factor and count until the entire ground is covered with planks. Let's apply the array modifier, then separate by loose parts. I'm going to use the OCD add-on on the planks that are visible in the camera to create damage on the edges. I spent a bit of time making this procedural stylized wooden texture and paired it with this curvature note group that I showcased on Twitter, which I've also included into the add-on I made that I'm calling Tiny Tools for now. For the stacks of kelp, let's start with the plane and add some loop cuts and turn it into a simple base shape of a kelp. Then let's use the grab brush to create imperfections and details. Array modifier to create a stack. Then with passive stars quick menu add-on, I'm going to randomize the rotation of the kelp. For the ropes, let's add an edge loop on a proxy, then extract the loop cut. Then control shift B to bevel. Apply the subdiv modifier and convert it to a curve, then increase the depth, then make some minor adjustments. I'm going to use the rope texture from Sanctus library, so let's convert the rope into a mesh, then mark some seams and unwrap it. I'm going to replace the vector with the UV coordinates, then rotate the z-axis by 45 degrees. Then make sure that adaptive subdivision is turned on, then lower the strength of the displacement. The stacks of kelp ended up looking a little unclear, so I'm going to rotate it this way instead. Now let's go ahead and do some refining and texturing. To summarize my lighting setup, I started with a HDRI that has soft shadows and turned it blue. Then I lowered the strength. I placed a point light inside of Asuka's lamp, then placed another one outside that only illuminates the main subjects and foreground via light linking. By the way, you can quickly link the lights to your subjects by first selecting the meshes, then shift select the light source, then hit Control L, link receivers to emitter, include. Then I threw in some fog with a cool color temperature to emulate the underwater look. I threw in a caustic gobo from Gobo's light texture then I gave the characters and props their own individual rim lights. At this point, I think it's almost mandatory that I waste more time producing music for my videos. So here are some drums, some strings, some xylophones, and now everything. So that about concludes this process video. If you enjoyed watching it, consider leaving a like and maybe even subscribe and make sure to check out the Patreon to gain access to my project files and additional exclusive benefits. Thank you all so much for your support and without further ado, this is how it turned out. Watch this video next if you want to find out how much one can improve by sculpting 100 heads. Bye!